we are talking about Data Loader. Now, Data Loader is a client application that you have to install separately on your own computer outside of Salesforce. So Salesforce, as we all know, is available on the internet, on the cloud, straight from your browser. But Data Loader, you have to install separately and download it onto your own computer. It can be operated either through the user interface or through the command line. Now the command line option is useful if you want to automate the export process or if you're using APIs to integrate with another system. The key features of Data Loader are that it works for up to 5 million records, that you can delete and export or back up data using Data Loader. It has duplicate management capabilities for accounts, leads, contacts and custom objects. And the way that I like to remember some of those key points of Data Loader is to imagine Data Loader like quite literally a great big earth loader or a great big bulldozer or some sort of big loader of data. And this helps me to remember that Data Loader is super powerful. That means that it can work up to 5 million records. And to remember that 5 million, I either imagine this great big bulldozer carving out 5 million into the ground, or I just think about all of the dirt that a data loader can move. And then I imagine each piece of dirt like a little brain, and it is 5 million of those. Whatever works for you, I think it's a great way to remember 5 million. I also know that bulldozers and diggers and those big sort of machines can actually back up, right? They can reverse. And that helps me to remember that Data Loader can also export and back up data. Now, when you download Data Loader, you need to log in. And to log into Data Loader, you must have a Salesforce username and password. And your multi-factor authentication is not going to be asked when you're logging into Data Loader. Now, if you're importing data using Data Loader, you need to be aware of what might cause this data import to fail. When you're using Data Loader, you need to have the 15 or 18 character case insensitive record ID. For that record, we can find a record ID on either the URL, so when you're in a particular record, you can find the ID in just the URL. You can find it using reports, or you can do an export from Data Loader and it's going to get all of those record IDs for you. Now the import might also fail if the required field is missing. So if you have required fields in Salesforce and you do not include a value for that required field in your import, then the import will fail. Now having a required field missing can get a little more complicated when you're using pick lists. If a pick list is restricted, all right, so there are restricted pick list values, and you include a value that is not in that restricted pick list, then the import will fail. But what happens if the pick list is not restricted, but the value that you are importing does not exist in that pick list yet? Will the data import fail? Well, no, it won't. The record will be added, and so will that extra new pick list value. But that new pick list value will not be added as a value that can be selected by other records. It will just be a one-off value for this one record that you import. An import will also fail if there's any failed custom validation rules or any failed system validation rules. Now when it comes to exporting from Data Loader, the export all option will include all of the items in the recycle bin as well. You need to remember that all formula and roll-up summary fields are excluded from imports. Now if you've decided to use the command line interface for Data Loader, then know that the command line interface is only supported on Windows. But Data Loader itself will run on both Windows and Mac. With the command line interface, you can schedule exports and imports, and you can also save data on a local server. Now the final part of Data Loader is the external ID field. You can use the external ID in place of a related record Salesforce record ID to relate and associate objects and records to each other as you process an upsert or an update operation in Data Loader. It can all be a bit wordy, so let's run through an example. Say you have object B, which has a lookup field to another object, object A. 
You can then use the external ID field on object A to relate those two records together. The external ID field is available for any object that has an external ID, and an external ID field can be selected in an import even if there are multiple IDs. That's all for Data Loader in this video. I hope that you learned something new and that it's a nice refresher of all of those important details that you'll need to know as you study for your admin exams.